In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the force of gravity and the normal force, two forces that show up over and over again in physics. While I'm talking about these forces, I will also show you some additional examples of how Newton's second law is used in physics. Let's start by thinking about a falling object, like this cup. As the cup falls, it accelerates, so there must be a force acting on it. That force is the force of gravity, and this is the force that is exerted on every object with mass by the Earth. The force is exactly equal to the mass of the object times g, where g is the familiar 9.8 meters per second squared. The quantity mg is also referred to as the weight of the object, and w is used to stand in for mg sometimes. I have denoted the force of gravity as f subscript grav here, but typically you will see f subscript g representing the quantity mg, and this notation can sometimes be confusing if the reader thinks that f is being multiplied by g, but that's not what's going on here. g is acting as a subscript in this notation. Now we can use Newton's second law, f net equals ma, to show why all objects have the same acceleration in free fall. I'm going to replace the net force in this equation with the forces that are acting on the cup. There's only one force acting on an object in free fall. That's the definition of free fall. So I will substitute mg for f net. I have to be careful though. Typically down is considered to be negative, and I'll follow that convention here. So in fact, negative mg is equal to ma. Noting that m shows up on both sides of the equation, m can be eliminated, and it looks like the acceleration for any object in free fall is negative g. This result does not have anything to do with mass, so we should expect all objects in free fall to accelerate at the same rate. A good way to think about this is that for a more massive object, the force that gravity exerts on the object will be bigger, but so will its inertia. The net result is that all objects in free fall accelerate at the same rate. Now let's switch gears and put the cup on a table. When the cup is on a table, gravity is still pulling down on it, but it doesn't accelerate, so the table must be exerting an upward force to balance gravity. We refer to a support force like this one as a normal force, and it's often denoted as F sub n, or sometimes just as n. I'm going to use F sub n in this video. Let's go back to Newton's second law to show that if an object is not accelerating, the normal force acting on it is going to be exactly equal to mg. This time there are two forces acting on the cup the upward normal force and the downward gravitational force. The object is just sitting on the table, so the acceleration is zero. Making that substitution and rearranging, we find that the normal force is equal to mg. This is probably exactly the result that you would expect, but don't get too complacent. If you start thinking that the normal force acting on an object will always be equal to its weight, you'll get yourself into a lot of trouble. For example, what if the cup is placed on the floor of an elevator that's accelerating upward? In that case, things will play out differently. The first two lines of the calculation are the same. Newton's second law still applies, and there are still two forces at work, the normal force and the gravitational force. But this time the acceleration isn't zero, it's positive. So rearranging the equation yields f sub n is equal to mg plus ma. Looking at this equation, if acceleration is positive, the normal force is going to be greater than mg. By the way, there are two ways to have a positive acceleration. One way is to go up and speed up, like this and the other way is to come back down and slow down, like this. In both cases, the normal force is going to be greater than mg. If the acceleration is negative, the magnitude of the normal force will be less than mg. The normal force and mg are still the only two forces acting on the cup in this situation, so the equation that we derive still applies, but ma is now negative, so the magnitude of the normal force will be less than mg in that case. Once again, there are two ways to have negative acceleration. One is to go down and speed up, and the other is to go up and slow down. If you pay careful attention the next time you ride an elevator, you might be able to feel the difference in the normal force when the elevator accelerates. If you bring a scale into the elevator and stick a baby elephant on it, you can see the reading change on the scale as the elevator accelerates. The scale measures the normal force acting on the elephant, and we refer to this normal force as the apparent weight. So in this elevator example, the apparent weight of the elephant is changing as the acceleration changes, but the true weight, which is mg, is not changing. Here's one more question to check understanding. What would the acceleration of the elevator need to be for the elephant to feel weightless? This is the same as asking what the acceleration would need to be for the normal force to be equal to zero. Going back to this equation, if fn is zero, a must be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In other words, if the rope holding the elevator snaps and the elevator ends up in free fall, the normal force would be zero and the elephant would experience weightlessness. Now I want to switch gears a bit and talk about why the support force is named the normal force. 
Students often want to call the normal force the natural force, but if you want to sound like a physicist, you should never use this term. The reason this force is called the normal force is that it always acts perpendicular to the surface that's producing it. In mathematics, normal is sometimes used as a synonym for perpendicular, and that's the way it's being used here. So let's look at some more examples to show that the normal force is always a perpendicular force. If the cup is placed on an inclined plane like this, the normal force will still be perpendicular to the surface, so it will point at an angle rather than straight up. There's more to say about the inclined plane, and I'll do that in a separate video. Another possibility would be to press the cup up against a vertical wall with your hand or something. In this case, the normal force would still be perpendicular to the surface, so it would actually be horizontal. Let me change gears one last time and point out that I haven't been drawing a lot of reaction forces in this video. I want to take a minute to tell you why I haven't brought up Newton's third law much at all, but it will help me first to put in some of those reaction forces I have been leaving out. The reaction to the force of the hand on the cup is the force that the cup exerts back on the hand. The normal force is the force that the wall exerts on the cup, and the reaction to that force is the force that the cup exerts on the wall. Finally, mg, the gravitational force, is the force that the earth exerts on the cup, and the reaction to that force would be the force that the cup exerts on the earth. When you start drawing these forces, particularly when there are lots of forces involved, the picture can get to be kind of a mess, and it can be confusing if you're not careful. The thing to remember in all of these situations is that Newton's law says that the net force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. If I'm thinking about the cup and I want to apply Newton's second law, I only want to consider the forces that are acting on the cup in finding F net. If you do draw a diagram with lots of forces on it and you want to identify the forces acting on a single object, you can draw it in isolation like this. And this is referred to as a free body diagram. You can even skip redrawing the object and just represent it with a dot. If more than one object is accelerating or interesting in some way, then you'll have to have more than one free body diagram and you'll likely have to put Newton's third law into play. For example, here two cups have been stacked on top of each other and are being accelerated by the hand. In this case, if you wanted to find out something about the force that the bottom cup is exerting on the top cup, you'd have to also think about the force that the top cup is exerting on the bottom cup. I'm not going to go through all of the details, but here are the free body diagrams for the two cups in this case. If you want to see more examples where Newton's third law comes into play, you could check out the video on tension. Meanwhile, I hope this screencast has helped to give you a broad overview of the gravitational force and the normal force.